Greetings, Grand Scrummers. Welcome to another episode of Scrum Academy. I am in a PSM 1 class and I pose this question. How do you measure your success as a Scrum Master? And I got to tell you, I got some very interesting answers. I got some answers like the Agility Health Radar to measure the success of a Scrum Master. Okay, that's nice. I got Velocity to measure the success of a Scrum Master. Okay. I got team makeup. Well, that's interesting. I got several different things and I was like, wow, this is quite interesting and interesting. It is. Now, I'm doing an experiment in that class and typically we don't have this conversation to the end of day two. After I've done an awful lot of teaching or really helping with the mindset, the tool set and the skill set. I figured, Hey, I'm halfway through day one. I am going to dare myself to ask this question. And those are some of the answers that I got. So I want to pose the question to you. How do you measure the success of a scrum map? What are some things that are popping in your mind? Is it some of the same things that I just identified? Agility, health radar, velocity, team makeup, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Very, very interesting. What well, today? I want to talk about five do's and five don'ts as it pertains to measuring the success of a scrum master. I'm going to give you five things that identify that you're failing. And I'm also going to give you five things that will identify that you're succeeding. So on this side, we have failing. On this side, we have succeeding. The goal is to get over here to this side. First of all, you're going to have to identify where you're at in the spectrum of failing versus succeeding. Which one are you? We're going to play this intro. We're going to come back and deep dive into that to give you those five things, five do's and five don'ts. Welcome back to the Scrum Academy podcast. I am your host, Grand Scrum Master Scott, and we're going to see if we can't answer this question while the students are at lunch. Let's see if we can get through this pretty quickly. <laughs> so how do you measure your success as a Scrum Master? Well, first of all, let's create an operational definition of what that is. Let's go to the Scrum Guide. The Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum team's effectiveness. What do we mean by effectiveness? Well, I like using the principle number 12 and the manifesto of agile software development at regular intervals. We're going to look at the scrum team's effectiveness and change our behavior accordingly. Yes. The scrum master is accountable for the scrum team effectiveness. They do this by enabling the scrum team to improve its practices within the scrum framework, quote unquote, from the scrum guide. With that said, the Scrum Master success is ultimately determined by the team's success and the success of others. Who are the success of others? We as Scrum Masters has three service levels. We serve the Scrum team, we serve the product owner, and we serve the greater organization. So how are we in terms of the organizational effectiveness? What does that look like in your environment? The five do and the five don'ts are not meant to be a checklist or scorecard for you to assess yourself as a scrum master, but really more of a thought process by which you should use in terms of identifying what actions are you going to take to help the team move from here further over to the right-hand side where success lies. Success is a broad spectrum and there are many shades of gray and many factors that affect success. A team may be experiencing the succeeding side, but the scrum master isn't contributing to that. A team may also be experiencing the failing side and the scrum master is doing everything that he or she possibly can to shift them toward the succeeding side. Let's talk about the don'ts. Don't allow your team to deliver poor quality at Brent review. Or don't allow your team to have inconsistent delivery. Remember, we have to deliver at least one piece of functionality at the end of every sprint. Don't allow mechanical scrum. Ocean 11, that's not scrum, is it? No, by no stretch of the imagination, it's not scrum. Don't allow low morale on your team. Low morale is something that you can see. 
looking around your team. How's the morale? Is it low? Is it medium? Is it high? Is it legendary? Don't allow it to be low. Don't allow stagnation. Keep it fresh. Are you still doing the same old sailboat bolt retrospective you did two years ago? Come on. It got to be kidding me. Or don't allow degradation. Don't allow dependency on you, the scrum master. These are your don'ts. So let's go over to the succeeding side. Do have reliable delivery of quality, valuable increment. Yeah, each and every friend. Yeah, something valuable that the company want. You cannot do that if we have a sprint goal at Sprint Planet. Are we doing that? Something that we can possibly look at. Or was it an opportunity for us to learn? Did we fail? We had a sprint goal. We tried our best to achieve the sprint goal when we got to the sprint. Okay, great. I like that. Okay, so we're going to use the sprint retrospective to talk about it and see what can we tweak or what do we need to do differently so that we can have a successful outcome. You do have not only you, but your entire Scrum team and you are helping the organization have a solid understanding of the Scrum framework, its theory, and the values. All of Scrum, not all our card Scrum, not mechanical Scrum, not Ocean Eleven. No, 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 no. The whole team has a solid understanding of the Scrum framework, the theory, and the value. Your team has high morale. They can't wait for you to facilitate the next event. <laughs> they early, in fact. Do have a culture of continuous improvement. Are you getting at least one continuous improvement item from the sprint retrospective that may be put into sprint planning event? Are you doing that? And then finally, do allow the team to be self-sustaining, AKA self-managing. How are you doing at fostering in an environment that self-managing thrive? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. These are the five don'ts and the five do's as you are looking at measuring your success as a scrum master. Remember, the whole point, scrum masters, of you being on the team is to serve the scrum team and the organization so the growth and improvement of the scrum team is how you measure the success. Of a scrum map. Also keep in mind, achieving agility with scrum takes some time. It's not something that, hey, we can start today and voila, in two, three weeks, maybe even a month, you're there. So give yourself time to identify what your team needs. Give yourself time to run the necessary experiments that you feel like would take your team from the failing side to the succeeding side. I wouldn't track that. How much time it takes you to go from the failing side to the succeeding side depends a lot upon where your scrum team is starting, the culture of the environment, the support that you have in terms of guiding your scrum team to that level of maturity, the impediments that the scrum team is facing, and even you as a scrum master, how about your range of skill? You scrum master must expand your range. This requires an exploration of teaching, facilitating, coaching skills, and other techniques that help you in your journey of personal development. I want you to consider what actions are you taking to serve the team? Consider, are you expanding your range and your expertise, your skill set and your tool set? If not, it's going to be a very challenging job for you to take your team from the failing side over to the succeeding side. That's going to be very, very challenging for you not working on your own personal skill set. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the five do and the five don'ts. I hope you got legendary value out of this episode. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that doggone notification bell so that you won't ever, 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 ever miss an episode at Scrum Academy. And also while I'm thinking about it, I want to give a shout out to the amazing students that have been just super duper committed to their learning. We have five more distinguished Scrum Masters as of this weekend. Those are people who have taken the PSM1 class, the facilitation class, and the advanced professional Scrum Master class. So shout out to each and every one of you. I know you're excited. I saw the text messages. I see all the shout outs on social media. I will get to you. 
be patient. You know, I've been training for the last two weeks back to back to back to back to back. In fact, I got about five minutes before this class come back and I'm gonna try to eat my lunch before they come back. So if you will excuse me, I'm gonna try to uh, finish my lunch, but I want to give you something this week. Didn't want a week to go by without giving you something that could add value to your skill set, tool set, and your mindset. Now, if you want to take your skill set up to the next level, you don't have to do this on your own. You can get into any one of my class, the PSM1 class, the facilitation class, the advanced professional scrum master class. All those classes are going to take your skill set up to the next level so that as you become more, you can also help your team become more and get on this side succeeding more often than not. Yeah. The do. Yeah, we want to get on the do side. Your team will love you. The world will love you. Your organization will love you. And you will make a ton of money doing it. So, hey, I'm going to get back to class. I look forward to seeing your name on the registration link. Make sure you sign up for my next class. And I'll see you so that we can help you. I look forward to helping you go deeper into these do's and don'ts and giving you some solutions that I have here to protect people from your belly. to succeed. As always, be agile, do strong. And be what? Super duper legendary, baby. See you in the next video. Bye.